Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be reviewing and demoing some really exciting new products. I'm going to be showing you the Chanel product. This is their Le Beige Oversized Healthy Glow Sun Kissed Powder. So I'm going to be demoing that and sharing my thoughts on it. I'm also going to be demoing and sharing my thoughts on the Monica Blunder Liquid Blushes. These are called the Liquid Flush Cheek Tints. I have two shades of these. I'm going to be applying one of those to my face and I'll provide swatches for both of the shades as well as comparison swatches and formula comparisons for this blush. And I'm going to be demoing and reviewing the brand new Pat McGrath palette. This is her Mothership 10 palette and it's called Moonlit Seduction. So I'm going to be doing this eye look. I'm actually going to use every single shade in this palette. So I've got a really good sense of how each of the shades works and the formulas and how everything works together. So if you'd like to see all of that, just keep on watching. Let's get started with a little bit of color on the face. I have my foundation, concealer, and powder on already. That'll all be listed below, but I wanted to get into some bronzer, some warming up of the skin. So I'm gonna be using this Chanel bronzer. This is new from their summer 2022 Le Beige collection, and it's their oversized Healthy Glow Sun Kissed Powder, and I have it in the shade Sunshine Light. So I think there are three shades in this little range, and this is the lightest one. This is something I've had my eye on basically since it came out. I've watched a number of other YouTubers use this and review this, and it's just always stayed in my mind, but I resisted buying it for a while, maybe about a month or a little bit more than that just kind of waiting to see if I would still want it as time went on and I found that I did. And since it's limited edition, I decided I would get it. So I've been really happy with this. I love the, just the large size of the compact. It's very appealing. I just find it really satisfying to have this kind of oversized um, size of a bronzer. I had only been seeing very good reviews of not only the presentation, but the product itself, which is the most important thing. So I'm gonna go in today with my Refer 05 brush. I've also used this bronzer with very large brushes, like some of the very large Sonia G brushes. Also the Refer 22 is kind of one of those oversized brushes that sort of matches this size of a bronzer, and that works really well too, but today I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of a smaller brush. Usually if I'm in quite a rush to get ready, those bigger brushes are great because I can just go right into the pan with those big brushes and kind of sweep the product over a very large area of my face very quickly. And I find that this product actually works well if I don't use blush as well. So it can double as kind of a blush and bronzer and just gives me that little bit more color and warmth that I usually want in the summertime. Technically, this isn't called a bronzer, it's called a Healthy Glow Sun Kissed Powder. And I think it is kind of somewhere in between a bronzer and a powder in the sense that it's not super sheer, but it's definitely more buildable. Um, it's not as pigmented as something like the Victoria Beckham bronzers, for example, which are also very smooth and finely milled, as is this. Um, but a little bit more pigmented. This feels just a little bit more kind of lightweight, both in terms of the pigment and the texture of the powder. So it's very buildable. You can put on a very light, small amount and it's not going to um, be overwhelming. And it's nice and buildable and really easy to blend. Here's what the color looks like on my finger. And I'll swatch it for you on my hand. So you can see it's not all that heavily pigmented. I'm going to build it up a little bit. So I would say it's a, on the warmer side. I wouldn't consider it really a neutral or a cool bronzer. Definitely has some peachiness in it, which um, I actually like for my skin as long as it's not too dark, which this is quite light. A peachy tone can work really nice, especially if I'm going to be kind of relying on it for bronzer and blush at the same time. I'm going to take a large eyeshadow brush. This is the Refer number 16. And just take a little bit more of the bronzer. And although I am going to be 
using the new Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette, I'm just going to do a really quick little wash of this over the lid just to add a little bit of that warmth and just kind of continuity with the rest of the face. The Pat McGrath palette appears to be quite cool toned and I generally do a little bit better with kind of neutral leaning warm tones. So I just wanted to add a little bit of that warmth from the bronzer to the eyes as well. You probably won't even really notice it in the final look, but just to kind of help me out and, and add a little bit of that warmth. Although I've already swept the bronzer across my cheeks and nose, I'm just adding a little bit more of whatever's left on this big eyeshadow brush here, just to add a little bit more color and shape to the nose. And taking the Refer number 26 brush and doing just a little bit of shading around my lips. And I just pulled the excess along my lower lash line. I should mention the Chanel, I'm going to call it a bronzer because that's essentially how I am using it. It does have a scent, it's the standard Chanel Le Beige scent. If you've tried their Water Fresh uh, tint, it's the same scent as that, as well as their other Le Beige products. I personally like that scent, I find it quite inobtrusive. Um, it definitely still has a presence, but I don't find it overwhelming at all, but if you um, have issues with fragrance, then that's just something to be aware of. So on a day when I didn't have any more time to do my makeup, I would be fine with just leaving it like this and not even adding any blush. But today I am going to be using um, one of the Monica Blunder blushes, at least if not both of the shades that I have. So there are four shades in this range of liquid flush blushes from Monica Blunder, and I have two of them. I have the shades Munchen and Salzburg. So I did mention these in my recent new and upcoming makeup releases video and I swatched them there, but I wanted to go into them in a little bit more depth here and actually apply them on my skin. So there's Munchen and Salzburg. Munchen is more of a neutral pink, uh, kind of a pinky beige type shade and Salzburg is more of a peachy pink and is just, I think, slightly a little bit deeper and I find it definitely to be warmer than Munchen. So for today's look, since we're going to be using the Pat McGrath Moonlit Seduction, which is more of a cool toned palette, I wanted to start off just with the cooler toned, more neutral shade here, Munchen. So these have 4.2 milliliters of product. They're nice and small and compact and they have a little doe foot applicator. So the way that I like to apply these generally is to just dot a little bit of the color onto my cheeks and then go in with my Sonia G Classic Base Brush. But I find that this formula is so easy to work with that you can kind of apply this blush however you want to. This is just how I tend to go for it. So just take my brush and it just melts into the skin, practically blends itself. And I love the way that it diffuses. So it does maintain more of the pigment right where I applied it. And then it just blends out and diffuses so nicely onto the rest of the cheek area that you want it to. So let's do the other side. So it just gives a beautiful Flush, I find this to be one of the most natural looking flush blushes that I've ever tried. Off the top of my head, I can't think of any that give the same kind of diffused, it's almost kind of a blurred quality that this product gives to the skin. But also the color looks like it's coming from within and it just looks so, so natural and fresh. So I wanted to compare these two shades to two of my Westman Atelier blushes. These are of course a very different formula. They, these are a cream formula in a stick as opposed to the liquid formula of the Monica Blunder. But I wanted to do just some shade comparisons because I think these are kind of interesting to look at. So first here I have Mimi from Westman Atelier next to Munchen. And you can see that those are quite similar tones. They give quite a similar effect on the skin. Munchen is a little bit warmer, I think, than Mimi, but very, very similar. 
And then here we have Chouchette from Westman Atelier next to Salzburg from Monica Blunder. And again, I think these give a, a very similar effect on the cheeks and they actually have kind of a similar finish too because they both give a soft, almost kind of blurring effect and they're both very good at giving that kind of blushing from within effect. Although I think the Monica Blunders might beat the Westman Atelier out in that department just by a tiny little bit. Both formulas are super easy to work with and very flexible, I find, in terms of how you want to apply them. With both of these formulas, you can either just put them directly on the cheek and then blend them out, or you can put them on the back of your hand and go in with a brush or a sponge. Um, you can go directly onto the component. So you could go directly onto the little doe foot or onto the bullet in the cream blush with your brush or sponge or even fingers as well. And it's gonna blend out and both I find are pretty foolproof formulas to work with. On the other hand, I also wanted to look at the Rare Beauty Cream Blush formula. I mentioned this when I first talked about these Monica Blunder uh, blushes in my last video. And I said that the Monica Blunders seem to be what the rare beauty wanted to be or what I think they should have been or hoped that they would be. At first glance, the two formulas seem quite similar. Even the way they're presented is pretty similar. They're both in these frosted components and apply with a doe foot applicator. Even the formulas themselves look quite similar. They're both liquids that are not very liquidy, so a thicker liquid that have a moussey quality to them, kind of like there's air whipped into them almost. But the difference I find is in how easy they are to apply and in the pigmentation level. The Rare Beauty ones are extremely pigmented and for me, there's one specific way that I find best to apply these, and these are not as foolproof to apply as the Monica Blunder ones. I wanted to specifically look at this shade Bliss because I think this is going to be another relevant comparison for these shades here. I'll just put it along the bottom so we can see it compared to both of those. I'll come back to that comparison swatch once the Rare Beauty one dries down a little bit but you can even see from looking at them here that the formulas, the finishes look quite similar. The problem for me with the Rare Beauty is that it's very pigmented and really easy to go overboard with this one. So when I apply the Rare Beauty, I like to apply it to the back of my hand and then I take a damp sponge and kind of work it a little bit into the sponge, just the tiniest little bit of product and then apply it to the cheeks. For me, that's really the safest way and the best way to apply the Rare Beauty one. I still like these, but I just think that the Monica Blunder is a more sophisticated formula and much easier to work with. And by the way, this is the matte liquid formula from Rare Beauty. They have a matte and radiant in their liquid blushes, and this is the matte, which I think is the most comparable to the Monica Blunder ones. So now that the Rare Beauty one has dried down a little bit, it almost kind of looks like it could be in between the two Monica Blunder shades that I have. Although I'd say it's a little bit more similar to the more neutral one. It's not quite as warm and peachy as Salzburg but certainly all of these are in the same type of a family. And I would say if you're looking at the Monica Blunder ones um, and you're looking at these two shades specifically, I would say you really only need to get one of Munchen or Salzburg. I think the effect on the skin ends up being quite similar, so much so that it's probably not worth having both of these colors. I would say if you want something that's gonna lean slightly warmer, a little bit more peachy and slightly deeper, go for Salzburg. If you prefer something that's going to be a little bit more along the lines of a true neutral, more of a kind of pinky beige, and just a little bit lighter, then I would go for Munchen. Now let's get into the eyes. So here's the packaging for Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction, and here is the palette itself. As I said, I find it to be more of a cool toned palette, maybe a neutral leaning cool. I have watched a few reviews of this palette and seen some really great swatches and demos. So I'm just gonna link a couple of the videos that I watched and found to be excellent below. I'm probably not gonna do swatches, at least not of every shade in the palette. So if that's something you wanna see, definitely refer to those videos that I'm going to link below. But I found that in watching those reviews and seeing this palette that it really reminds me of 
the Rowan 52 Degrees palette. That's their cool toned cream shadow palette. I just find that this color story is really reminiscent of that. Obviously this has 10 shades where that only has four, but I just feel that they have pretty similar vibes. I actually don't have that palette, but I've come close to buying it in the past. And that's the palette that this reminds me of most. So I'm not really sure what I wanna do for my eye look today, but I think I'll get started with this shade right here, which is called Rosewood Romantique. I wanted to also quickly mention the brushes that I'm using in this video. Most of these brushes are actually new to me as well, and they were very kindly gifted to me by Refer. I don't have an affiliate code or anything, but they contacted me a while back on Instagram. They messaged me and said that they had seen one of my Holy Grail brush videos, and I mentioned some Refer brushes in those videos, and they wanted to just send me some of their brushes as a thank you for including them in that video. So I was so touched by that and they actually said that one of my viewers had contacted them to let them know that I had done that video and talked about them. And so I don't know who that viewer was, but I want to thank you so much for going that extra mile and contacting Refer and letting them know about me. That means so much to me that one of my viewers would do that. and. I just wanna say that I, I appreciate all of you who watch my videos and comment and support. And a huge thank you to that viewer who contacted Refer to let them know about me. So because of that, I have all these beautiful new Refer brushes to work with. And I have tried to use most of these at least once before filming this video. And I have to say there are some definite new favorites among these brushes. They also sent a few of their face brushes. I used the 04 today. I didn't use it on camera, but I used this for my powder and it was excellent. And the 05 is the one that I used for bronzer. So to start out, I'm actually going to use the number one, which is a brush that I already had and use on an everyday basis when I'm doing my makeup. It's one of the very few eye brushes that's in my little everyday brush container because it's super easy for just applying shadow all over the lid or just in the crease, which I want to do today. So I'm going to, again, go into that Rosewood Romantique, pick a little bit of it up on the brush, going to tap it off just in case, and just focus that in the crease area and blend that nice and softly. Take a little bit more and just kind of build it in the outer corner a little bit. Now this is a type of shade that I like a lot because it actually is a little bit more of a warm tone. So I think for me in this palette especially, this is going to be very useful for helping me to keep things from getting too, too cool and stark. Because I find tones that are too cool do look very harsh and stark on my eyes and my skin. So this is a great inclusion into this palette. It's not extremely warm, like it's not pulling orangey. I think rosewood is a perfect descriptor for it because it has that rosiness. It has that little bit of pinkiness but it's also beautifully muted with a little bit of brown. It has a little bit of coolness in it too. So it's really lovely. Now I'm going to take my number 13 brush from Refer and go into this deeper matte here, which is called Plum Cabaret. Just gonna build up a little bit of depth and intensity in the crease. So that applied very nicely as well. I'm gonna go back into that first rosewood mat and just kind of reintroduce that color more in the outer portions of the crease, just to get that dimension back in there. And I often like to pull my, usually if I have two crease colors going on the lighter of the two, just into the inner part of the eye there as well. And actually I wanna add the third and final matte as well, this deeper brown one, it's called Extreme Nocturne. I think it's described as 
a taupe, like a deep taupe. It's definitely more of a cool tone shade. I'm using the Refer 28. This is a big favorite of the new Refer brushes I've been trying. It's a little flat shader brush um, and it's nice and small. So compared to the number 21 from Refer, which I also love and had previous to them sending me this new one, this is just a little bit smaller and thus very good for my smaller eyes. So I'm taking a little bit of that color and just kind of patting and blending right along the outer part of the lash line and kind of the outer third of the lid, I guess. And just kind of blending around the edges there. I don't need this to be perfectly blended because I'm planning to put a shimmer on top of it. Okay, and now I'm dying to try this duochrome shade. This is VR Sextasy, and I want this to be my standout lid color. So you can see there, I believe it's described as having a vermilion base with a blue reflect. So I'm just gonna pat this basically all over my lid, I think including on top of that deep mat. Actually, I'm going to keep it on the outer two thirds of my lid. There is VR Sextasy on the lids. It has an incredible wet look. Just so you know, I'm just in totally natural light right now. So in real life, this is probably going to look more impressive, but I think it still looks really beautiful from what I'm seeing on my screen here. And I love how it pairs with especially those two kind of rosier, more burgundy type mattes because the base of this color is actually quite similar in the same family as those two mattes. So it just works really well on top of them and adds that dimensionality. It looks very foiled and wet, but at the same time, there's still a sense of translucency to it. So I'm also very eager to try this shade right here, which is called Blitz Venus. And let's just take a little bit of that again on the finger and tap that into the inner third of the lid. So there is Blitz Venus. Stunning. It's one of those really kind of scintillating shimmers. It has a lot of dimension with different sized shimmer particles in there. It gives a really glimmery, effervescent kind of look. Now, I love Pat McGrath's Blitz Astral Shades. They're the most special, in my opinion, shades in her palettes. But the thing that's always kept me from using them more than I already do is that I inevitably always get fallout from those shades, those really kind of glittery, glimmery shades. But I was watching Alicia Archer's review of this palette. She's, in my opinion, the, the queen of Pat McGrath. She's an absolute encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to Pat McGrath. And she said in her video reviewing this palette, or it might have been her follow-up where she did, I think, six looks with this palette. But she said that the way to apply these sparkly, shimmery shades is to just go in with your finger and just tap once into the pan and then pat it onto the eye and you won't get fallout. And so I've been trying that since I saw her say that and it totally works. I haven't gotten fallout from these shades since I started doing it that way. Just one tap into the pan and then apply it to the lid. You can totally build it, but if you just go one tap at a time, you can build it up without getting any fallout, which is just a game changer for me with these shades because I love them. I think they're super special and beautiful, but that fallout issue always held me back. And as it turns out, I was just trying to apply too much at once and taking too much onto my finger 
finger or my brush and swirling and then getting a lot of that fallout. So just the one tap build method works incredibly well for these shades. So if that's an issue that you've also had with these types of glittery shades, definitely try that out because it's worked perfectly for me. So next up, maybe it would be nice to go in with this gold shade. This is called Astral Gold Lust. And I'd like to try that on my inner corner. I'm gonna use a brush for that, but I'm going to, again, try not to pick up too much of the product and just build it gradually so that hopefully I can avoid some fallout. So I'm gonna take the Refer 03 brush for that. This is one that I already had in my collection, but a super useful brush, great for the inner corner. So I'm just going to pat that there. This gold almost looks like it has a little bit of a kind of pink champagne flip to it. It's really beautiful. I'm going to pull it up just in a little line along the inner crease. And the whole time I'm using this, I'm patting rather than applying with a sweeping or real blending motion. I can still blend it with that padding motion. It just takes a little bit more time. Okay, next I want to work on the lower lash line. So I'm going to take another new favorite refer brush. This is the number 26. It's kind of like a jumbo pencil brush. It's really great because it has this tapered tip and it's totally rounded. So it's really nice. It would even have been good for doing that inner corner, but it's really nice for the lower lash line as well and a little bit more detailed work. So I think what I'll do, actually, I might first go into this Skin Show shade because by putting that down first, it's going to naturally soften and lighten a little bit whatever shade I put on top of it, which is what I want for my lower lash line. So it's actually not a Skin Show shade, it's Skin Tense Glow. So I believe this is just a little bit shinier and more reflective than her traditional skin show shades, which are usually in that position in her palettes. Now with this shade, it's probably pretty hard to see, but looking at it up close, I'm really seeing that moonlight inspiration for this whole palette in this shade. This to me is very representative of that moonlight glow. So here's that skin tense glow on my finger. I wanted to swatch it to get a better sense of the reflect, which is quite strong and the color. So it has that almost kind of silvery, bright white moonlight quality, but I feel like the base is actually a little bit warmer. So when I angle it like that, it just blends completely into my skin. So it's kind of more of a neutral, almost like a cool yellow base with that kind of brighter, whiter reflect. Now, I don't know if I'll get to use all the shades in this look, but I can try to use as many as possible. So I'm gonna go into this one right here, which is called Bronze Devotion. Same number 26 brush. And I'm just gonna pull that all along the whole lower lash line. I think this is a beautiful shade for the lower lash line. I don't like to usually have too much depth, but I definitely still like to have a bit of a shadow and kind of contour with my lower lash line color. So this to me is a perfect shade because um, I also don't like cool tones on my lower lash line. So this is warm enough. It's kind of more of a cool neutral bronze, um, but it's warm enough that I can wear it easily on my lower lash line. It's very soft because it's a metallic, but it also has just enough depth that it's still showing up and giving me some nice definition on my lower lash line. 
And since it's a metallic, I do want to add a little bit of a matte on top, just at the outer part of the eye, just to kind of define things a little bit better at the edge there. So I'm gonna go back into that rosewood shade, which was the first matte I used, and just blend a little bit of that right on the outer edge. It's not gonna have nearly as much impact as applying it just on my bare skin on the lid because it is still on top of those metallic shades, but it's still gonna add just that little bit of grounding that is not reflecting the light. That should hopefully kind of define things just a little bit better. Okay, now there are only two shades that I haven't used yet, so I would like to try and use them. This one right here, which is called Platinum Dusk. Beautiful platinum. In videos I watched, I found it almost looked like it had a little bit of a green shift or pull to it. I'm not necessarily seeing that in my swatch, but, oh yeah, maybe in the undertone, there's a little, do you see that? Almost looks like kind of a khaki green there. Very interesting, but again, that very bright kind of silvery reflect. And then the other one I haven't used yet is this other Blitz shade or astral shade. It's called Astral Lilac Allure. And this one is a little bit more sheer and I think really meant to be a topper shade. So it's a little bit more sheer than the Blitz Venus that I had on the inner part of my lid. And I think I'm gonna try to use that as, I believe it's intended, which is as a topper. So again, one little dip with my finger and I'm gonna pat it right kind of where these two lid shades blend. And it just adds that little bit of extra brightness. I'm gonna add a touch more. Actually, I'm going to kind of pull it up on an angle right up to the arch of my brow. So you can compare the two lids. This has the topper on it with the Astro Lilac Allure and this one doesn't have the topper on it. I feel like so many of the shades in this palette have this incredible ethereal quality. I really see the moonlight inspiration and I think this is a very special palette. As I said in my previous video where I was talking about this palette, at first glance, I was a little bit disappointed. I thought it was a little bit boring, but I think this is a truly stunning palette and bridges those two worlds of very creative makeup. I think you can definitely do really creative, kind of exciting and fun looks with this, but you can also do super wearable looks, but you can get a real twist on those wearable looks where it's just going to take it to the next level. You can still kind of wear it for any type of occasion but it's just gonna have that little something extra and special. So since there's only one shade that I haven't used yet, the Platinum Dusk, I'm gonna go into that again with my Refer 26 brush. And I'm just going to put that, maybe try to bridge where I have that main metallic there with my inner corner shade, just to get just a little hint of that. So there you can see with the addition of Platinum Dusk and without Platinum Dusk. Something I really enjoy doing with my eye looks is actually bringing a shimmer further down than you would expect to in this part of the eye. It really goes beyond the eye space, but I find that that just adds, again, a really nice ethereal kind of otherworldly quality and almost a youthfulness too, to the look. So I think all that's left to do with this eye look is to just add a little bit of liner and mascara and I'm gonna use the palette for liner. So I'm gonna go into this extreme nocturne shade right here and using another of my new refer brushes, the number 23. This I think is one of the best liner brushes ever. It's this tiny, tiny, tiny little pencil brush, which again, just like the one that I just kind of described as a jumbo pencil brush, the number 26. 
It, it's basically the same brush, but miniaturized. So it has that same round ferrule and goes to a really nice fine tip. I actually love what happens when I put that deep shade over top of the shimmers there. It brings out the dimensionality of the duochrome shade and I can really see almost like a teal blue coming through where it's applied on top of that. And then toward the outer edge where I have more depth, um, it's almost looking like a very dark brown or a black. And here's with Extreme Nocturne as a liner versus without. Quite a difference, I think. So I'm gonna finish up the liner on the other eye, apply my mascara, then I'll come back. I'll show you the final eye look and I'll finish up the look with something on my lips and just round up my thoughts on everything today. I finished up my lips with the Rose Ink Lipstick in Besotted. I thought this would be a perfect shade to go with this palette and this look. Just top it up a little bit. I already had the Lisa Eldridge Fawn liner outlining my lips and the two work together really well. And I topped up the blush in Munchen just a little bit to get a little bit more of a flush. And here is the completed eye look. So let's finish up my thoughts on this palette first before we move into the other products. I expected to like this palette because I really like all of my Pat McGrath Mothership palettes, all of my Pat McGrath palettes in general, but I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised by how much I like this. I was a little bit scared because it is that bit of a cooler toned color story. It's not very colorful, the tones are all quite muted, and perhaps not all that exciting at first glance, but I'm actually thrilled with this palette. I think the moonlight, moonlit inspiration for this palette really comes through, and I think that although, yes, it does have a number of cooler tones in it, it has enough warmth built into it at the same time and enough nuance within these shades that makes it wearable for someone even who doesn't particularly gravitate toward the cooler tones. The rosewood shade in particular, I think really helps to bring a lot of warmth. And actually the VR Sextasy shade as well is not that cool toned. Although I think it is actually described as having an icy blue flip. I find that the blue here is almost like more of a teal in a certain sense. It almost has a touch of greeniness or like a platinum quality to it that make it really gorgeous. All of these special shades I think are very special. I'm actually gonna swatch Astral Gold Lust and Blitz Venus here. And they feel very different to the touch actually, these two shades. Blitz Venus feels very packed into the pan and the gold one feels a lot kind of looser and almost a little bit drier in the pan. Let's put them on the side of my hand here. So Blitz Venus super reflective, goes very far, very pigmented, and then Astral Gold Lust. Also super shiny, but just has a little bit more of that kind of glimmery effect to it, where the Venus one is looking a little bit more metallic. This Venus looks very wet, high shine, and the gold one has a little bit more of that kind of scintillating quality. Blitz Venus, to me, it's like a platinum pink, which is an incredible shade to have. I feel like so many of the kind of pinky metallics that we have are rose gold, so they're leaning more toward the warm side. They can often look very coppery, very peachy, but this kind of platinum pink here, I feel like it doesn't have any of that at all which almost makes it more of a true pink. It's just this very beautiful, kind of cooler, neutral, pale pink, which I've been looking for, and I don't think I actually have anything quite like that. And as I said about the gold one here, I really do think it has some pink reflects in it, which makes it a very interesting shade. So that's it for the palette. I love it, and I can't wait to play around with it more. Usually when I'm playing with my Pat McGrath Mothership palettes, I tend to stick to just like two, three, four shades. I very rarely would do a look with all 10 shades in it. 
but I like to use as many as I can in my review videos and I'm really happy that I was able to get what I think is a pretty cohesive look using all 10 shades in here. But it's also going to be great for one and done or really simple looks with just a shimmer all over the lid and maybe a matte to, to blend out the crease a little bit. The Monica Blender blushes I think are excellent. I forgot that I also wanted to compare uh, the shade Munchen to my Lisa Eldridge Pink Poetry. Because again, I think those are in kind of a similar family. So I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of Pink Poetry here. The Lisa Eldridge formula is much thicker. And there's Pink Poetry. The Lisa Eldridge one is, I find, quite a bit more highly pigmented as well. And for that reason, again, I find the Monica Blender just a little bit easier to work with, although the Lisa Eldridge ones are very, very easy to blend. I just find I have to be a little bit more careful about how much product I'm actually starting out with with the Lisa Eldridge ones. And I think those shades look to be pretty similar. I believe Pink Poetry is a little bit darker and it's a little bit, it has a touch more mauve in it compared to the Monica Blender. But again, I think you're going to get a very similar effect on the face. So if you perhaps missed out on Lisa Eldridge's blushes, she said she's not bringing them back until 2023. I think she needs to fix the uh, packaging on these. But if you missed out or maybe you went through your whole Pink Poetry and haven't been able to repurchase it because they're not available anymore, I would say definitely consider particularly the shade Munchen from Monica Blunder. And the Chanel Bronzer. I don't think this is a truly exceptional product. I could certainly live without it and be very happy with all of my other bronzers, but it's just kind of one of those special pieces that is beautiful both in terms of the product and the presentation and just something that I'm very happy to have. And it brings me a lot of joy to just look at the component and to work with the oversized product and it's super easy to use, very lightweight, not overly pigmented, so it's nice and buildable, very easily blendable, and I love that this is a shade that can work very nicely as both a bronzer and a blush to give you a very quick, very easy, all over warmth and glow. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I always love to see those. And if you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'd love for you to do so. Thank you again so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.